Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about Synology versus QNAP which should you buy if you are on a tight budget. Now Nanit has become super vogue. I remember when it was crazy niche and no one was really into it. It was seen as very nerdy and techy and a bit train spotter. But now in 2019, it is an exceedingly attractive idea to have your data rather than on Google Drive and uh, Dropbox and all that stuff in the cloud, that you have your own private NAS. And this is your private cloud accessible via the network and the internet but you own it and you have it in your hands. And that's one of the reasons why NAS has become so popular. But when something becomes popular, it also becomes you know, low in price for a number of reasons. Uh, one, because of large scale demand, and two, because of manufacturing technique getting better. And both Synology and QNAP have a range of very affordable NASes, going as low as one bay, that's one hard drive or SSD NASes, for as little as 90 to 100 pounds, going all the way up, so to spending three to five hundred pounds on pretty well spec devices great for plex backups vms and more so today we want to talk about what which of these two brands should you be buying as your cheap budget cost effective no money in the bank nas because you want access to a private cloud but you don't have a lot of money to do it and you've still got to factor in things like tax uh, at the end of it vat and then you've got to factor in the hard drive media and all that sort of stuff so i get that now, both of these NAS brands, as mentioned, have their own very well specced out and budgeted NAS solutions. And if we look at one and two bays predominantly, we're not going to look too much at RAID 5 solutions, where it's a four bay NAS and bigger. We're going to look, focus as much as we can on one and two bay NASs. Now, there is no ignoring it. Synology NASs, with the exception of one, are always more expensive. They always cost more than their QNAP alternatives. And that's because Synology software is better. It's just their DSM software is not only feeling a lot more fluid, but a lot of their first party applications such as Synology Chat, Synology Office, Synology Calendar, Synology Document, or Synology Office even, Synology Mail, their surveillance station software, their virtual machine software, everything. They have loads of good apps that they develop themselves that rival a number of third party applications. QNAP have a lot of good software apps too, and their software platform is indeed excellent. It's just not quite as good as Synology's. What the QNAP focus on is hardware. They have a great software range, but there's no denying it in terms of hardware, QNAP wins by a country mile. They arrive with HDMI, USB um, direct access support. They support keyboard and mice. They've got remote controls, more PCIe slots, 10 GBE, and better CPUs and memory options straight off the bat, and LCD panels and more, as well as Thunderbolt NAS 2, which doesn't really fit into this category. So in terms of hardware, you would be hard pushed to beat a QNAP NAS. And in terms of software, you know, it comes close, but there's still no denying it, Synology is better for software. So we're not going to end the video right here, don't worry. But if that was the biggest factor for you with buying your cheap NAS, that might have helped you, and you can walk away, like and subscribe, thank you. But that doesn't answer the question fully. Because once you start going for a more budget, cheap NAS option, you also end up with a situation where you might pay for something that just doesn't work. Because it doesn't, I mean, there are some enormously popular brands out there, but if you buy something at the cheapy, 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 cheap end, it might be terrible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale it back and we're gonna go for the most shoestring, low price NAS from both of these brands that you can buy right now that's part of their existing lineup. In the case of QNAP, it is the TS128A. It's a Realtek-based uh, uh, CPU NAS. It's got one gig of memory inside there. It supports a light, um, um, it's out of beta, but it's still not great version of Plex. It can't really do anything like virtual machines or anything like that, or Linux station, but it can run container station, a mail server, a download station, and more. But it can't multitask as well as some of the other NASes, even though it is a more recent Realtek CPU in use in a number of cases. From Synology, <coughs> it is the Synology DS119J, a NAS that I've mentioned on this channel several times. Now, as NASes go, it is pretty poor. Uh, the DS119J from Synology only goes for about 70 or 80 quid. It's a one bay NAS. Got USB 2 on the rear, one LAN. It's got DSM in a stripped down form. It supports a couple of cameras in surveillance station. DLNA, nothing like Plex or anything like that. And it's a dual core ARM CPU 
at 800 megahertz per core and 256 megabytes of RAM. As I said, in terms of hardware, QNAP always win. But the DS119J's user interface is still better. Even in that little confined way, and as soon as it's set up, because it's not the quickest device, via DLNA, it's fine. Um, now, that's the cheapest of the cheap. If I had to choose personally between the 128A and the DS119J, I'm going to go for the QNAP, because I know my way around NAS. But if you don't know your way around NAS, I reckon you're going to get frustrated real early on if you don't go for the Synology. So if we move it to the next tier, that is the TS1, uh, the ts 228 a from QNAP. Same thing, but with two bays. Exactly the same specs. It just happens to have an extra bay on the top. Get rid of that snooze. Um, Synology have got the DS218J. Now, this is where things get interesting because the DS218J is a dual core ARM CPU and it's got 512 megabytes of RAM. But the DS218J somehow manages to create a far more stable platform. You can install uh, an unofficial version of Plex on it. It's got better surveillance station support. It supports a number of those Synology apps. I even think you can get a slightly low rent version of Synology Moments. And in this comparison, if I had to choose between these two two bays, I'm going to go for that Synology. And this is the point. Because at that point, the DS218J is still a great budget NAS. I'm not going to say it's going to blow your socks off because it really won't. Because when it comes to buying a cheap budget NAS, you the minute you look for a video like this that said cheap NAS, best cheap NAS, or whatever the keywords are that I've got a bung in the analytics, the minute you did that, then chances are you accepted in your heart that this device is going to be slower than the rest. You accepted what you were getting was a compromised product. And in the case of these two NASs, the DS218J compromises far less than its QNAP contemporary because what you don't get the true QNAP experience on that two bay at that price level. It costs less than the Synology, as it always is in these paradigms, but the DS218J gives you a better feel of Synology's programs and applications and operating system in a way that the TS228A doesn't fully depict the QNAP in the best possible light bring it down a tier, you're getting better value for hardware and software off that one bay compared with the one bay Synology, which is a poor representation of DSM. Those are the cheapest NASs out there anyway. But in terms of cheap NAS, again, like many of my videos, buying the right cheap NAS from me for Synology or QNAP is gonna come down to what your priorities are. If you've got a bit of technical education or networking knowledge behind you, go for that QNAP, because the cheap QNAPs, if you don't mind doing a little bit of the technical, and there isn't that much like a little bit, you're going to see far greater return on your investment. However, if what you want is a user-friendly um, experience, if you've come into this world of NAS and thought, oh, I want to get an NAS, I want to get an NAS, but I have absolutely no idea about networking or IT, don't hesitate to buy a Synology, because it's user-friendly user interface, and those applications for your phone, your iOS, your Android, the same as with QNAP, are going to see you through all the way um, from beginning to end. And you'll never have to learn anything too technical more than you know for Windows Explorer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. This video doesn't have PayPal or Patreon or any of that sort of stuff. It is supported by your views, your likes, your clicks, your subscribes, the works. And remember, in the comments, there's a link to my best budget NASs of 2018, along with a link there to get completely free and partial advice about the best data storage solution for you. I can't promise a quick reply. I'll get back to you in about mm, a day or two. There's a hell of a backlog. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.